Hey guys, Pamela Price here from my studio in Pickering. I am the Toronto spray tan class trainer and I want to talk to you guys about hands and feet when it comes to spray tanning. A lot of my students say those areas are really tricky, so I'm going to show you my techniques to create a super flawless application. So let's create a barrier on the hand so that the spray tan can't develop like it would for the rest of the body. The texture of the skin is different usually and there's dry areas. Also the knuckles can be tricky, so make sure you put a little bit of product on there. So I am just using a moisturizer, which is safe to use with spray tans on the top of the hand. And then on the inside of the hand, I'm using a barrier cream, which is a little bit thicker than that moisturizer to create a full barrier so no tan develops at all on the palm of the hand. I like to blend it into that crevice of the wrist as well. And then I apply extra product onto the nails so that the nail bed doesn't get stained. There we go. So the same rule basically applies for the feet. I'm going to use that same moisturizer for the top of the foot. And I blend it into the ankle, especially on the back of the ankle where you feel the texture of the skin is thicker. Make sure it's nice and blended. And then I use that heavier barrier cream on the toenails. Try not to get it on the skin. And then I use that thicker barrier cream around the edge of the foot. There we go. And up the back of the ankle there as well. So when you're spray tanning the hand, I like to use what I call a feathering technique which means when I'm working on this area, I do a light pad and I do it in an X pattern. So there's less product going on the hand, I'm pulling back and I'm not applying as much product. So a lot less product is being applied and the X technique works to ensure that you get the side of the hands. So the same rule applies for the foot, you should apply less product. Keep in mind that a lot of overspray can fall down on the foot. So if it looks like the foot already has product on it and it has a good tan, don't even worry about doing it. If you feel like you want to add a little bit of color, then use that same X pattern, stand further away and don't apply as much product. So it looks like um, Samantha touched the side of the tent with her hand. So I'm going to use um, a makeup remover wipe and then I put a, a tanning solution remover on there as well. Make sure you don't get it on the top of the hand. It's quite strong. It, can, it only works if the tan has just been applied. If it's been on a long time, you'll have to use a separate tanning solution remover of it. There we go. So normally, whoops, she touched it there too. <laughs> Normally a wipe itself would be good enough to clean the hand, but in this case you want to have a remover available as well. Okay, so just to clean the inside of the hand, I'm going to use that wipe. And then same with the other side. And I like to stop right where the wrist starts. And I also remove any residue on the nails. And I do the same for the feet. So we're removing any product that's sitting on the nails. And then I like to wipe around the edge of the foot as well. really ensure that the tan looks natural. It looks great now, but you never know what might develop differently. I just take a little puff, and I like to do some blending in those areas. Same thing with the foot. You can see there was some excess product on there, which could have overdeveloped, leaving the hands looking unnatural or too dark. 